the next session will be starting in one minute. All right, so here we go with the next session, which is X, Edge Stack and Singulus Complete VM Network Implementation with Qvert CNI, presented to you by Zangu Shin and Jian Li. And excuse me for not pronouncing the names correctly, if that's the case. So with this, okay. I'm handing it over to you. Okay, uh, thank you for your introduction. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Sangwon Shin, and from the SK Telecom in Korea. And I have been working in SK Telecom uh, for like the a few for six years. And the last uh, few years, I have been developing the uh, MEC uh, platform in SK Telecom at, at SK Telecom. And I'm going to in this talk, I'm going to give a presentation of like the edge stack and the singulars uh, with my uh, co-worker Jian Li. And I'm going to cover a little bit about like the uh, background of this project. And then I'm going to explain a little bit kind of the uh, less technical part. And then uh, after that, Jian Li is going to cover a little bit more like the uh, technical part, about, like the uh, more about uh, like the uh, Qubit uh, CNI. Yeah. And as you guess uh, from the name, like the Edge Stack, uh, Edge Stack is kind of the, uh, the, the uh, Edge Specific Cloud solution. And the Singulus is kind of the, uh, the network stack of the edge stack. So uh, first, let me explain a little bit about the MEC because the edge stack is co component of the MEC. So I guess everybody already knows the why it's MEC, but um, let, me, uh, let me explain very briefly. So uh, usually the uh, more MEC is a multi-access edge computing, but in uh, SK Telecom, because SK, Tele SK Telecom is a mobile service operator. So uh, we call it like the uh, mobile edge cloud. So. Uh, Originally, without the uh, uh, MEC, the, all of the our services are, are running on the cloud. And uh, as you can see in the uh, this picture, uh, all the service comes through the uh, internet best for traffic. So um, even though we have 5G network, but because of this kind of the best internet uh, best for traffic, the latency is very large. And now when we introduce the MEC between the, uh, the service and the 5G, and then uh, the service can be uh, provide very close to the user, uh, user, uh, which means they like the uh, in the telco uh, the center. So they like the latency can be reduced dramatically, like the around like the uh, a few hundred milliseconds to the uh, now we are uh, targeting about ten milliseconds. And not only that, like the uh, because the all our services are located in inside of telco, so security uh, gets much better. And also uh, the SK, like the, uh, some telco, like the SK Telecom can provide like some very specific, the, uh, some API, like the uh, network assurance, like the uh, user locations, like user identity and mobility, which was not, uh, which was, have been never been provided in the cloud. Yeah. So this kind of the uh, concept of the MEC. And then now uh, SK Telecom has um, developed uh, the MEC platform for like the last two, a few years, and then SK Telecom has commercialized the MEC platform uh, for the last three uh, last uh, three years ago. Yeah, and next. Okay, so uh, this screen uh, shows kind of the uh, the user interface of the uh, SKT MEC solution. As you can see, we are using the MEC. Uh, we can manage the multiple sites. Uh, this is kind of the, uh, the screenshot of the dashboard and using dashboard so the, uh, uh, the operator can manage the, all the workload and all the services of the, uh, the MEC in a single view. Uh, and next. And this is the customer portal. Uh, the MEC platform manager, uh, the previous one was for operators, but now this custom portal is for like the uh, developers, like the enterprise customers, like the, uh, maybe you can think of this screen, this, uh, the portal is called the AWS console. But using this console, the, uh, the MEC service provider can deploy their service very easily. And any user can request kind of the, uh, any uh, VM resource, container resource, like the uh, 
well, some Kubernetes resource using the, this screen. Okay. And next. And uh, extra explained before, like the uh, main feature of the MEC is to provide the, uh, the uh, VM uh, resource to any uh, MEC service. Uh, so I, uh, we really have to provide the uh, VM resource. And also like the, these days, the, uh, the MEC services, content, well, uh, MEC services and also the telco service have been the uh, content, containerized. So also we have to provide the uh, container service. Yeah. So that's kind of the uh, background of the, uh, our MEC solution. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, this kind of the uh, very uh, brief, the architecture of the, uh, the MEC solution. And, uh, and as I explained before a little bit, uh, MEC solution has, uh, is composed of the four layers. The first one is the MEC router. And next one is the MEC platform manager, which manages the all of the, uh, the, the life cycle management of the uh, virtual resource like VM and containers. And also uh, I've shown some uh, the screenshot of the orchestrator and I've, I've uh, shown the, uh, the, uh, the screenshot of the, uh, the, uh, 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 the business console. Um, and on top of that, uh, also we are trying to provide some media, some specific like yeah, service. Also, we are, we are trying to provide also vision AI, uh, the edge product. And also, we are trying to provide some uh, between the like like the uh, the MEC federation function, also uh, the marketplace of the uh, MEC service like this. And then, but if you look at the the the, the later part, is is edge stack. So we think that like the, the core function of the MEC platform manager is um, how to provide the, uh, the edge specific cloud solution to the users very, uh, with Azure. And then uh, edge is very kind of the, uh, the it's not like the, uh, the hyperscalers like the cloud. So edge stack, uh, the, the edge, usually edge is deployed some kind of very, uh, very uh, small area. So uh, usually we have to provide the uh, the this kind of the, uh, solution with very lightweight. Yeah, this kind of the uh, kind of requirement of the our edge stack. Yeah. Next. So uh, when we designed our edge stack, there were some challenges. Uh, expi uh, like the uh, uh, this is kind of the uh, the evolution of the uh, telco network uh, function. Uh, originally, the uh, the telco network function was uh, provided as a kind of the uh, under uh, physical, it's called PNF, and then it has been virtualized, and then it has been um, provided as a VM. But now, more, all of the services has been the containerized. Yeah. So as you can see here, uh, we have to provide uh, the VM service. Also, we have to support also containerized service. So, so our challenge was that how to provide the uh, the VM service and the container service with the single uh, platform without like the uh, heavy platform, like the uh, some open stack, right, you know, some VMs like the uh, TKGs and, and everything. Because it's, it's like, uh, it's like explain the edge is not like the hyperscaler. So we have to provide the uh, this kind of the solution in a very lightweight. Yeah. And that was kind of the, our main challenge. And next. And of course, like there are, uh, like the OpenStack was kind of very kind of de facto of the uh, some uh, cloud solution for uh, for like the last uh, four or five years. Uh, but like may maybe you uh, anybody you have uh, who has been uh, uh, deployed the uh, OpenStack will will be uh, realized that it is very complex uh, to deploy, and then also the management of the uh, the OpenStack is it is much more um, uh, complex. Of course, there are kind of, uh, kind of efforts to uh, make it a little bit easier to deploy using like the uh, Kubernetes. Uh, there, there, there was kind of the uh, project was called Airship. And uh, using the Airship, the OpenStack can be deployed very easily on top of the Kubernetes. However, uh, still uh, we have to deploy the Kubernetes. But on top of that, also still we have to uh, deploy the uh, uh, OpenStack. And then that increases a lot of CapEx. And then, and then also still we have to manage the uh, both Kubernetes and OpenStack. That's kind of the, uh, uh, requires a lot of the uh, management complex. Yeah. So uh, we couldn't uh, like uh, choose this kind of the uh, solution. Yeah. And next. And now, well, now as everybody guessed, and now that's why we have chosen the, to use the Kubebot. Uh, as you know, the uh, uh, the Kubebot uh, provides the VM service using the pod. 
So using the uh, the single Kubernetes the uh, the framework, you know, we can provide of course the uh, the uh, container service, and at the same time we can provide the uh, the VM service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, there are some limitation. The uh, the Kubernetes project is very nice. However, there are some limitation in the network. Uh, it uh, now it only supports like Calico, Flanet, and Antria, uh, which is good. But but we uh, but but uh, we had to use uh, we, uh, we had to use this kind of the uh, the, the, the Kubernetes solution for the edge solution. But the the very uh, the strict requirement of the edge is low latency. Yeah, so we require the very high speed and low latency network, and that's why we had to design the uh, our own Kubernetes CNI. Uh, which will be explained in more detail by the uh, GM uh, later. Okay, next. Okay, this is kind of the brief, uh, the, uh, the, the HST architecture. But as you can see, they're using the Kubernetes and the Kubernetes. Now we can provide the, uh, the VM service. And also we can, uh, we can provide the uh, managed Kubernetes. Uh, the funny thing is that now we, we can provide the, uh, the container using VM. And now we are now we are we are uh, we are uh, uh, providing VM using the containers, yeah. And uh, except that uh, also we are, have some kind of module called the edge stack, uh, edge disk. Edge disk provides the uh, the edge specific uh, the storage solution, and the edge trunk provides some API to interface all of these kind of the uh, uh, fantastic uh, the features. And also there's a component pulley. Pulley provides assurance. The uh, it collects all the data from the uh, some Kubernetes, the uh, the, the Kubernetes also from the network side, and it provides all the uh, the stat resource statistics to the uh, the MEC platform manager. Okay, so this kind of a lot of architecture. And next, and also we are because of the uh, our edge stack is composed of the um, mostly like the with open sources. So now uh, we are using the open interfaces. Yeah. Uh, for example, yeah, when we provide the managed Kubernetes using the VM, uh, we are using CNCF plus the API. Yeah. Uh, so they're like the um, any uh, any other implementation that follows the cluster API can be used uh, for as an adapter to the uh, our the uh, the uh, the stacks the uh, uh, managed uh, managed Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes um, uh, 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 provider. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is my part, and then um, I'm going to uh, yeah, introduce Jian Li, and he's going to talk about the uh, more technical detail about the Kubert CNI. And Jian, uh, please. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me uh, present the Kubert CNI part. So uh, uh, let me first uh, provide some motivations of this Kubert CNI. Uh, so when we come up, Gian, sorry, sorry for speaking. But, uh, I would appreciate if, if it's possible for you to to open up the camera, and, um, so that it's easier to follow you. Only if it's possible. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Uh, Hello? Thanks. Uh, so you can see me? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so this is a Kubert CNN, what we are going to introduce today. So uh, when we come up with the, uh, uh, with integrate this Kubert with the uh, existing, uh, uh, try to migrate the existing uh, VM services into the Kubert, we uh, encounter that the networking party is not fully compatible with the existing OpenStack and Richfront. So, so as you know, the, the Kubernetes CNI, for example, like Entrail or OVM Kubernetes, uh, they typically adopted the, the, the Kubernetes networking model and uh, they uh, provide the CNI interfaces. Uh, but since it doesn't really implement VPC like the networking model, so like subnet isolation, the underlay support, the overlay uh, underlay support are very limited and it's, it doesn't really support. And also static IP address management is not fully supported uh, with the existing CNI. Uh, but the, the good news is that the overlay and some other parts like stateful firewall and uh, broadcasting, load balancing, those type of things are sort of supported, they're partially supported. And some DPU like acceleration, this part is also supported. And uh, uh, 
and those CNIs are uh, sort of compatible with the Qbert. But, but again, it doesn't really support VPC and token model. So if you go to this OpenStack Neutron, it's uh, just really for VM and token model. So if it's, it's provided with VPC and token model and the, the infant interface is uh, ML2. And they support a bunch of like uh, uh, like uh, VM native network model, like uh, subnet isolation and delay and CPI IP assignment and security group and so on. And uh, what we really want is we want to interface with the Qbert, but we want to support VPC and network model as well. And also, since this is MEC, so we want to accelerate this data plan uh, by using OVS CPDK as well as GPU uh, hardware pooling as well. So now we introduce Kubert CNI. Actually, Singleus is a set of like a CNI plugins that realize both VM and control networking stack. And the Kubert CNI is one of the uh, uh, Singleus uh, CNI plugin, which is dedicated for supporting the VPC networking model. And we have another CNI called Kubernetes uh, CNI. Uh, and support uh, the Kubernetes networking model is very similar to Entria. And, uh, this model uh, leverages OBS as data plane and uh, we use Onos as a async controller as a networking uh, platform. So this is uh, one of the uh, deployment example that we uh, deploy both management network as well as uh, OBS as a service or maybe external network. And we use a Kubernetes CNI to control uh, the service network in this use case. And so, th so now we introduce this Kubernetes CNI this is for a bunch of like a VPC network model uh, that has not been uh, easily realized by using existing CNIs. And uh, most majority of the uh, VPC features have been supported like uh, uh, subnet isolation and underlay and overlay support and uh, static IP assignment, uh, security group and uh, load balance and multicasting, the floating IP, those are all supported. And uh, we are also working in progress on uh, OVS, uh, supporting OBS BTK and uh, the DPU hardware pooling is also in our roadmap. And uh, the uh, good news is uh, this CNI is fully compatible with the uh, Qbert. And uh, now uh, I would like to briefly introduce Onos because uh, Onos is our uh, network uh, platform. And uh, I think maybe some people may hear about Onos and maybe some are not. So I will provide some brief introduction of Onos. Onos is open source scan controller. It's just for using for uh, scan of the uh, solution use cases and they provide high availability through the CUD control plane. And this is uh, for carry grade uh, SM controller. And they support various cell phone protocols like OpenFlow, OBSDB, P4, and et cetera. And uh, uh, by itself, it provides high availability by using the distributed core. So even if one control node is being filled for some reason, then the switch including software switch and hardware switch can be automatically detected by failure and uh, connected to the uh, uh, the neighbor uh, the control plane. So, uh, so the high availability can be achieved by using this mechanism. And so the application developer no need to care about these uh, availability issues. And the, another rationale that, uh, that we choose on us is like, it, since it supports uh, various South Sound API and the, there are a lot of bunch of applications already available on top of Onos. And the one of the uh, application called Chalice, uh, it's a multi-purpose sleep spine fabric management solution. And uh, if you come up with, uh, with the, uh, uh, deploying uh, this uh, VM networking solution like a platform, somehow you need to configure underlay network as well as overlay. And typically those configurations are supposed to be done in different uh, a different manner uh, and different like uh, uh, the control panel. But using, uh, by, but by adopting this ONOS, then we can configure and control overlay the underlay network just in one uh, like a network platform. So no need to uh, switching between uh, the different uh, the control panel in this case. So if you're interested by trials, you can visit the site. And this is the, the diagram that shows how we uh, integrate this Qbert CNI with OBS. So we, there are two flow to integrate this Qbert CNI. Uh, one is uh, we uh, interact with the Kubernetes API server uh, from the Qbert CNI perspective. Uh, typically we receive a bunch of events from the API server like uh, uh, network creation and the uh, floating IP creation, the uh, like security group creation, the type of event can be received CNI and then by, by uh, using that event to be uh, 
calculate the flow rules and uh, install, eventually install their rules using the ONOS. And ONOS actually uh, in charge of interact with the uh, Open V switch uh, using the OBS DV protocol as well as Open Flow protocol. So it's in charge of creating bridges and uh, attach port and the install flow rules and so on. So once VM has been uh, created, then the kubelet will invoke CNI commands. I think the, 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 we are using OBS CNI from kubelet uh, uh, to community and to create, uh, to attach the port to the, uh, to the OBS. And this is an example of using both uh, Calico and uh, OBS uh, to provide the management as a uh, service network. And this is the basic uh, flow. And we typically uh, deploy the Acubert as a type of a stable set. And there, inside there, there is a leader elector and the compute, um, uh, like sidecar, uh, running together with the Acubert CNN. So this is a summary of uh, the Acubert CNN feature. So definitely we provide the LTL connectivity uh, by using a bunch of uh, custom resource definitions. Uh, actually, we try to not uh, introduce many CRDs and we try to reuse existing CRDs uh, in, in, uh, from the community, uh, like uh, network attachment definitions from Motus. Uh, for layer three, uh, we introduce a virtual router uh, CRD and the floating IP CRD. The for uh, layer four, we introduce load balancer and the uh, security group and the security group rule. And that's it. And just by introducing maybe four, uh, I think maybe four, yeah, four, uh, four or five CRDs, we implemented the whole like a VPC networking model. Uh, also, another uh, feature is that the IP address preservation. So once, so uh, once we, uh, so if we uh, spawn a VM and we start a VM, typically uh, it uh, get assigned another IP address because it runs inside the pod, but by using this uh, IP address preservation assignment, the IP address for VM will be statically assigned. So even if we restart VM, the VM will always get assigned the same IP address. And we, we realize that by using uh, the HTCP and the cloud in it, uh, like the approaches. And this is the source for the CRDs. So this is a uh, cured CNI with vanilla OBS. And uh, this is uh, the example of uh, uh, constructing a tenant network. And as you can see, uh, there are two types of tenant network. One is uh, uh, VXN, uh, VXN is uh, denoted as uh, green, another one is blue. And those uh, network will be served by using the integration bridge network and each tenant network will be served by a separated integration bridge, as you can see here. And those bridge will be attached to the uh, bridge uh, tunnel, tunnel bridge. And uh, for external connectivity, we also introduced another concept called the lightweight edge gateway. And inside gateway, we have three uh, bridges. One is a uh, bridge business, and another one bridge tone, tune, and another one bridge int. And uh, all gateway related uh, flow rules will be installed in a bridge int. And uh, the NAT related rules will be installed in a bridge business, and so on. Okay, so this is an example of uh, creating a prior network. This will be, we reused the network attachment definition uh, CRD. And as you, can, as you can see, we added a bunch of annotations uh, for creating the network. So uh, definitely we need to add the uh, a CIDR and the gateway IP and IP pool and the host route and TNC. This is very similar to the concept from the OpenStack. So we just brought all the like uh, networking concept from, from the side and uh, you, you can similarly uh, add those calculations in Kubernetes as well. And uh, this is for provider network. And you just need to add this flat network type and then the network will be uh, directly connected to the underlay. And for tenant network, you have to, you have to select the types of uh, tunneling protocol. Uh, in this example, uh, we added this network as type of GRE and uh, segment, uh, you also need to specify the segment ID and so on. So the ritual part is more or less similar, but since uh, the role of each bridge is different, so in this case, uh, or, uh, you have to, uh, so, this, so this type of product network is associated with a, a, a BR int, but while the type of is uh, associated with a BR int plus the segment ID here in this case. 
For the security rule, we uh, implemented a bunch of uh, uh, the pipeline and they support a various, uh, like a full based policy enforcement. So uh, it's for source and destination, IP address, exact match, and longest bridge match. And the protocol we so far supported four types uh, directions ingress in the US. And uh, we also support a uh, poor range and identical match as well. So this is uh, the detailed pipeline that how we implemented this is the, the security we are using OBX in this case. And in order to do that, we leverage the contract uh, OBS module. Uh, this is the example of creating security group CR. And uh, so one security group can contain a set of security group rules. And you can specify details of these rules here. So in this example, we just allow ingress uh, by traffic. So you need to specify the port range max and then at this manner, and then we allow all uh, remote ac like access in this case. However, if you're if we're using vanilla OBS, one of the pain points is uh, uh, the the performance. So we we are now moving forward to adopt OBS DPDK uh, in Cube C N I. And uh, architecture wise, there are not big changes. Uh, one thing is uh, we have we are uh, we are considering to use uh, the user based CNI to attest part to OBS bridge with the vhost user interface. And the, the data type supposed to be configured as not that, and the size that configuration needs to be enforced. Jian, a small heads up that there are four minutes left, and it would be good okay. to finish a little bit early. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And this is uh, the revised architecture uh, for the OBS DPDK. And the, the several differences has been, uh, you just can tell. So uh, we have to introduce another bridge called the BR2 DPDK. And we have to configure the IP address for this bridge in this case. And so for tenant network, uh, it's fairly simple. Just uh, go for this tool. And for uh, cross tenant communication, you have to go through the LEG, it's a gateway, and VR insert will uh, run as a rerouter, like a logic inside. And uh, finally, if you want internet connectivity, yeah, this type of uh, uh, nothing is also disappointing. So underlying network is fairly simple. There is no, you, it, you, you just need to directly con uh, uh, connect it to the uh, LEG and there is your serving uh, the network, uh, like the public network connectivity, and so on. The summary, yeah. So SK has been developing the Kubernetes CNI to provide VM networking stack, uh, specifically for Kubernetes, uh, and we have uh, already contributed it to the uh, owners open source community in a way to help users to ease the migration process from OpenStack to Kubernetes. And those are source code. So if you're few interested about contributing. Uh, to the community, you can visit the yeah, site and uh, make contributions. So future work, what we are country planning is uh, we want to support network telemetry, and we want to provide some reports of the network statistics to the Prometheus. And then another thing is we want to provide data plan acceleration. Uh, and for uh, this year, uh, Q2, we want to integrate that with the OBS DPDK. And uh, for at the end of uh, this year, we want to offload it to eventually to the hardware. And uh, those are areas that need help from the community. And uh, so one is external load balancer for 10th Kubernetes cluster. And the reason that we found that uh, Kubernetes at the Kubernetes community are uh, developing the cluster API provider Kubernetes. So we hopefully want to integrate that with, the, uh, with this one. And one, we, we also want to enhance the security uh, by introducing the IP stack tunnel and the full security and the VPN service and the firewall service. And we also want to support the IP reform and VCP stack support as well. So this is the end of my talk. And if you have any questions, feel free, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you already. Um, I mean, that's amazing uh, of what you weaved around Qbert. So I see three questions in here. Is the CNI open source? If if so, could you please provide the link? Okay, so this is the link. I think the end of my slide, you can find the link. And actually, this has been included in that ONOS project. So in order to use this CNI, you have to compile the ONOS. And uh, we actually upstream all the source code to the ONOS master branch. 
And uh, yeah, you can just directly pull the master branch and the compiler and they can uh, deploy that on top of Kubernetes. Cool. The second question is from Dan. It seems to be useful for plain pods too. Is that correct? So are you considering to, to provide this for pods as well? Or can it be used for pods already? Uh, so do you mean uh, attaching that to the pod and uh, providing some pod communication as well? Yeah. Okay, actually that is possible. Yeah, that's, that's possible. And uh, actually uh, you can attach it both to pod or VM. So we actually do not really care about the workload. So you also, yeah, you can use that as for pod communication as well. Cool, thanks. And the third question is from Chris. What kind of bandwidth are you seeing? Real world or theoretical bandwidth? Uh, what do you mean by bandwidth? Like in the, the traffic bandwidth, like a network bandwidth or? Um, in square, yes, he says yes. So for, with the vanilla OBS, uh, based on our like the preliminary uh, performance evaluation, we found that um, with the 10G uh, D curve, it only support like seven, around seven G uh, like throughputs uh, using v, VXLAN uh, tunnel. If you, you are using VLAN, then the performance will be increased. And if you're using the provider network, I think the performance would be more than similar to the biometal like case. Uh, so, but if we move to the OBS DPDK, then it can show a lot of CPU, but uh, it almost preserve like uh, like a guarantee the performance. Like uh, so around uh, so for 10 G N car, it can provide almost like line rate, like from maybe not nine nine point five gigabyte. But one limitation is that it has it gonna intentionally use CPU. So if you are lacking of CPU resource, uh, our recommendation is uh, try to upload this to the DPU. So if you are using DPU, then all the traffic will go with, go through directly go through the smart name. Then it's gonna free up a lot of like the CPU resources, and that the the performance can also be guaranteed. It, it provides line rate in that case. All right. There's the last question, but we're a little bit short on time. Um, so one thing I want to call out is it's great to see your work. I would encourage you to add yourself to the Kubert adopters file. If you go to the Kubert Kubert repository, if um, you're open to it, then you can open a PR to the adopters.md file to add yourself to it because you seem to okay. adopt Kubert. Okay, uh, Sang Sang can you answer the question? Because uh, it's, uh... or do I need to answer? Yeah, I, I think we, I need to discuss it with the our management and to decide whether to open it to the, uh, uh, to the adopter. And I will yeah, come back to you soon, once I get answered. Awesome, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for the presentation um, and for showing us this great deep integration. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank great. you. Thank you. And with this, I'm